Once upon a time, the Sahara was green. There were vast lakes, hippos and giraffes lived there, and a large human population of fishes foraged for food along the lake shores. The African humid period, or Green Sahara, was a time between 11,000 and 4,000 years ago, when significantly more rain fell across the northern two-thirds of Africa than it does today. The vegetation of the Sahara was highly diverse and included species commonly found on the margins of today's rainforests along with desert adapted plants. It was a highly productive and predictable ecosystem in which hunter gatherers appeared to have flourished. These conditions stand out in marked contrast to the current climate in northern Africa. Today, Northern Africa is one of the driest regions on Earth, home to the Sahara Desert, the largest hot desert in the world. This extremely dry region, where it's not uncommon to have no rain over a year in some places, was once a tropical humid area. Cave drawings in the Egyptian Sahara depict people swimming in lakes and a tropical humid environment. What, then, caused the complete reversal of climate from a warm, humid and wet environment to one of the driest locations on Earth? The answer lies in the climate of the Arctic and northern high altitudes. But first, let's take a step back in time, when northern Africa was humid and tropical 5,500 years ago. This time, spanning between 11,500 and 5,500 years ago, is known as the African Humid Period where, you guessed it, northern Africa was a very pleasant place to live. However, around 5,500 years ago, there was a sudden shift in the climate in northern Africa, leading to rapid acidification of the area. What was once a tropical, wet and thriving environment suddenly turned into a desolate desert we see today. This rapid transition 5,500 years ago stems from the cooling of northern high latitudes. The cooler temperatures in the north weakened the high-altitude tropical easterly jet, which consistently brought moisture into northern Africa. Due to the weakening of the tropical easterly jet, the African easterly jet strengthened, which indirectly inhibits rainfall in northern Africa. The research team deconstructed the story from leaf waxes, whereby they measured the isotopes of deuterium within the plants to record a proxy for rainfall in the area. Plants record the amount of rainfall they experience in their cells, altering the isotope ratios of various elements depending on regional climate conditions. This is a common way geologists reconstruct climate conditions of the past. What is interesting is that the cooling in the northern latitudes was not all that significant compared to the glacial or interglacial cycles that Earth has experienced for hundreds of thousands of years. This means slight variations in the average temperature of the northern high latitudes could have a light switch effect, turning on and off precipitations in northern Africa. Considering the recent warming of the planet, nowhere more so than high latitudes, it will be interesting to see if northern Africa at some point flips to a more tropical and humid environment. While historical data suggests this is likely if warming continues, the process could take hundreds of years and it's unclear how fast that tipping point is. While this may seem like a net positive effect of a warming planet, it's important to realize that there is a finite amount of rainfall around the world. If one region becomes significantly wetter, one would expect another region to become significantly drier. This could mean the emergence of mass migrations from areas that increasingly have less rainfall to areas that increasingly have more rainfall. Massive Crocodile In 2014, paleontologists discovered the remains of one of the biggest crocodiles ever found. Named Machimosaurus rex, this prehistoric beast was twice the size of any crocodile seen today. It would have weighed at least 2,993 kilograms and been around 9.8 meters long. The fossil was buried in Tunisia on the edge of the Sahara Desert. Besides its size, this find is also significant because these crocodiles were believed to have died out in a mass extinction event between the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods about 150 million years ago. The discovery suggests that extinction event was not as widespread as some paleontologists believed. Legged Whales 
Whale Valley is a paleontological site in the southwest of Cairo, Egypt. It was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005 after hundreds of amazing fossils were discovered in the area. The first whale skeletons were discovered in 1902. Initially, the site attracted relatively little interest because it was difficult to reach. That changed when four-wheel drive vehicles became more readily available in the 1980s. The largest skeleton found reached 21 meters in length, with well-developed five-fingered flippers on the forelimbs and an unexpected presence of hind legs, feet and toes not known previously in any archaea seti. Besides whales, hundreds of other marine creatures such as crocodiles, turtles, sharks and rays have been uncovered. Some fossils are so well preserved that their stomach contents are still intact. The incredible quality and quantity of the remains make it possible for scientists to reconstruct the surrounding environmental and ecological conditions of the time. Eye of the Sahara, or Rishat structure. Situated in the nearly empty desert of northern Mauritania, the Eye of the Sahara, known more formally as the Rishat structure, has fascinated scientists ever since its complete discovery in 1965 millennia after its discovery by local inhabitants. Wild theories abound about how the structure, which is 25 miles or 40 kilometers in its diameter and made of two concentric rings. Scientists believe they have a sound theory about how the structure itself was formed. The Eye of the Sahara was first discovered in 1965 by the NASA astronauts on board the Gemini 4 mission. They were looking for possible impact craters from meteors, and this was one spot that caught their attention. While the structure had technically been discovered earlier with archaeological remains of Homo erectus found nearby, and the nearby location of a Mauritanian village, Odwan, these astronauts were the first to actually see the full structure because it is too large to see in its entirety from the ground. At first, scientists assumed that the site was a crater caused by a meteorite impact. However, scientists could not find any melted rock at the site, which would have formed due to the heat caused by the proposed impact. As such, the likelihood that this was a crater was low. Origin Theory of the Eye Scientists have an alternative theory for how the Eye of the Sahara was formed. They believe that the structure was formed nearly 100 million years ago when the shifting of tectonic plates due to the breakup of Pangaea caused molten rock to move toward the surface. However, it did not immediately break the surface, causing a bulge or dome to appear on the surface of the earth. This created fault lines in the area and also changed the limestone that was originally present there to a type of rock called breccia which is still present there today. Thank you for watching. Show us some support by clicking on that subscribe button and turn on the notification feature to see more. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.